All right, in this episode, we talk about the mechanics of the curveball. And we break down Danny Munez's mechanics. Portio, Steven Godani here at the At Top Lossy, hashtag Pitch Tips Show, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, At Top Lossy, hashtag Pitch Tips. Ask your question and answer on the show. Um, 2x3x camps coming up. If you haven't uh, booked those camps, they're going to be, uh, they typically sell out within the month, I'll usually say, so try to book those ASAP. I've got them all lined up into the fall. Um, get those going. we got 2x camps as well, as well in the books. Um, just two little things I'd like to shout out. Hold on. We get the pocket radar. I want to talk about the pocket radar. All the guys in my 2x3x programs, I highly recommend that you use a velocity uh, gun to, to read. And, and this is just something really simple, convenient, as reliable. Uh, we want you to gun med throws, target throws. It's something that we make very important because we don't know progression if we don't know where our speeds are. And of course, we're going to have up weeks, down weeks based on our loading through the program. But still, I want to recommend this. We do get a 10% off if you're in the part of the top lossy community. If you get 10% off at pocketradar.com using the coupon code top velo. I haven't done this in a while. I wanna throw a shout out to uh, the King of the Hill. King of the Hill's doing really well, getting a lot of just insane testimonials. Just read a great testimonial from Rich from um, the Washington Nationals about how they're now using this in every affiliate, all the way from rookie ball on up. Cool. Um, and they really believe in uh, how this helps uh, coach the pitcher, just cause it gives you that audible click and it's very different than other products we've seen out there. Why? Because it, with this plate, two things have to happen. It, sl it slides and bangs on the plunger, so it slides horizontal to the ground. So that means you have to get your force vector, which is your ankle to knee, in a linear direction to actually push that plate back. So if you're not aligning your force vector, it's not going to click because you can't push down. And if you're not generating enough force because you can crank it pretty tight, it's not going to pop. And it's really great with the 3X programs. 2x programs i got it in i have my own manual for it if you want to check it out the velocity development kit uh, but let's get started what are our questions for today justice martin asks how do you increase the rotation on a curveball arm speed grip mechanics now as far as with 3x pitching and 3x pitching mechanics everything is the same everything is we coach for a fastball will be same for any pitch um, and spin is important to pitches and it's important to fastballs too Spin rate, I truly believe, comes from more angular velocity of the shoulder. Okay, so the more speed in the rotation of external to internal of the shoulder is going to put more spin on the ball. That means you're just going to have more speeds coming in internally into release. Now, if, if I am, say, kind of more a lot, of, a lot of horizontal abduction to adduction, and there's a lot of push on the ball, which is kind of basically, you know, good angular velocity is when the pivot is, is stable and it's not moving. When I'm moving that state, that pivot forward, that's going to reduce the internal rotation speed. So I'm going to be straight behind the ball longer as opposed to internally rotating harder. And so, so someone who typically follows a good trunk path and the arm lays back into that trunk path and then the front leg stabilizes and really slams everything uh, into internal, you're going to get a really good spin rate. So I always find guys that have good trunks and have good arm pass, not a lot of horizontal abduction to add, add abduction velocity, it's gonna have a lot of spin rate. So if you can have those good mechanics with the curveball, with a slider, you're gonna get more spin on the ball and you're gonna have better movement on the ball. Um, you know, David Ardsma, someone who's been with this program for two years, and the guy came into this with a great trunk, um, and just watching his ball with his trunk path, he's, I think he's almost a 30 inch trunk path, meaning at front foot strike, his trunk goes almost 30 inches, which is unheard of. I've never seen any other pitcher come close. And he has crazy spin rate to the point where his ball has that crazy rise effect. If anyone who's caught him, it just is freakish. You feel it's like awkward, you're gonna get yeah. busted in your face all the time. And, and when he throws anything breaking, it, 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 it's very sharp uh, because I believe he's got good internal rotation velocities through, because of that trunk. That would be my opinion. Anything you wanna add to the curveball arm speed grip mechanic. I had a terrible curveball, so I'm probably not the best person to ask. I had a great curveball in high school, and I, I tried to hook my curveball and about ruined my elbow. I had about eight shots of cortisone. So oh curveballs should, 
curveballs, breaking balls, it, it should only be pressure points through the ball. Um, it, you know, fl extension flexion of the wrists. No pronation, supination, because that is so important to elbow health that we have a good supination, supination to pronation movement. And if we're changing that by how we do our grips, it's gonna be hard on your elbows. So if you throw a curveball correctly, which is just through extension reflection ex or extension flexion of the of the wrist, you're gonna be a lot healthier pitcher and you should be fine. Studies actually show if you're probably that pitcher, you, it's actually easier on your arm to throw a breaking ball because you're typically not throwing it as, as hard as a, as a fastball. So less torques will be on the arm. Um, yeah, cool. Next question. Danny Muniz asks, can you look at my mechanics and let me know what I can improve on? So Danny, you're really good in loading your back leg. Torsion looks great. Um, I just think you're lacking leg power because you get to the point where we're ready to drive and just not a, not a lot of speed coming out of the leg, coming off the rubber, not a lot of force coming off the rubber. And then something interesting happens. You hit front foot and you are separated, but your trunk just rotates. There's no linear movement. Now, of course, if you had power hitting front foot, you had linear energy hitting front foot, that would want to have catapulted you forward. So of course, your lack of that. But another interesting thing happens is the back hip, because there's, you, you might have a little hip tightness, but because there's no hip rotation, there's no energy going forward in that back hip, you're leaving the hip behind and you're landing that hips very closed. And, and it's also, uh, the head's even maybe a little bit out at that point. The head or the chin's just ahead of that, uh, that back hip. So what that is, is it puts a little bit too much weight forward at front foot. So you're not in a position to where the front foot can really kind of push back and help you know, abduct the, the, the glute and push the trunk forward. So it's the, the hips just a little back. So you land and there's no really catapulting effect going on. So all you can really do is just swivel around the front leg force vector, which is a little linear. So two things happen. If we don't get force off the rubber, we don't have momentum to take us forward. And the second thing, we can leave the hips behind and we get into a more vertical front leg force vector. And then things just want to be rotational because you, if you don't have a good linear force vector on the front leg, then you have nothing kind of pushing you back. And I use the terminology or the analogy of the pole vault. And I'll, when I always talk about pole vaulting, I'm, it, we're relating the, the stick in pole vaulting to actually you, your whole body is the pitcher. If I'm running with a stick to pole vault and try to jump up as high as I can, and I stick the stick straight down after running, it's probably not gonna bend my stick. I have to get into that good linear angle, stabilize it where, it where it sticks, and then I can bend the stick with that energy which takes me forward. Same thing the front leg, I gotta hit front leg, I've gotta be in a linear angle, so then all that catapults forward. Also, I've gotta keep my stick back so all everything bends and then catapults forward. Okay, so you're just, because you don't have enough energy, it's like, so it's like you didn't run fast enough with your stick. At the same time too, you're putting your front leg or your stick to vertical and things just wanna swivel and rotate at that point following rotation. So that's really the big issues I see. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how I can follow that up very much better. <laughs> so like he's saying, like I, I would just be curious to see what your power to weight ratio is, like uh, how much power you have in your lower half and if it's low, how we can uh, get that power to weight ratio up so you're uh, driving harder off the back leg and hopefully that just enhances everything and makes it more uh, dynamic and then going into uh, what mobility issues you might have um, uh, just to try to get more time behind the ball and uh, again just work towards making everything more dynamic. I mean I really like your back leg. I mean you load it really well. It's just no there's no energy coming out of it. So it's like it's like you can load your gun you just don't know how to really pull the trigger yet and, and then pulling the trigger you don't know how to handle it and, and, and you know as it fires and that's after front foot how to transfer everything. So you need to you need to kind of like leave the back leg loading all that behind right now and then get better at getting force in the front foot and getting that trunk to, to move into four tilts and, and not just want to rotate and, and that's going to be key for you once you start converting it better then you can start building more power into it and go and that's simply what we do with the 3x programs we're going to teach your front leg first and then get you to get more power in the front leg to catapulting more energy would forward. he be a, a good uh a good guy to do the pull through yeah, with I mean, the, so we basically you can feel more energy in our level two. We use these assistance bands and we actually pull you down the mound. And if you can stabilize front leg and get into more linear position, which typically happens when your hips come up, 
Because think about it, if I'm keeping my chin behind belt buckle and I'm powering off the mount, my hips push up and then my front leg gets out farther and then it gets more linear, okay? So me pulling you through your back hip in this drill we do in the, in the level two program, you'll, you'll feel all this momentum down the mount hitting front foot and your front leg gets in a better force factor and if you're strong enough to stabilize it, you're gonna feel all this energy going forward and your ball speed goes up. Mm -hmm. Tip when we do that with this drill, it's cool. You actually get to see your ball speed go. And so. you would get to just kind of feel how fast he needs to move. And then yeah. that starts going back into now you got to develop how you can move that fast without somebody pulling you. Exactly. Good point. All right. If you have a question, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, at Top Velocity, hashtag pitch tips, hashtag baseball tips, ask your question, answer the show. 2x3x camps coming up. Don't forget to book those, and we will see you on the next episode.